Happy Thursday, everyone. Hope you're doing well. Yesterday, we talked about Abraham's hospitality that he showed to three strangers. When he did this, it provided him with an extraordinary opportunity to hear and converse with God himself and two angels. What we learned during the conversation is that they ask where Sarah is, and that Abraham responds that she's in the tent. How close they were is not clear, but Sarah was probably within earshot of the conversation and probably listening in. The angel makes a definitive declaration and affirmation of God's earlier promise to Abraham when the covenant was made in Abraham, with Abraham in Genesis 17. In Genesis 18.10, he says, the angel says, I will re surely return to you about this time next year, and Sarah, your wife, will have a son. This declaration is definitive with a specific time frame. Wouldn't you and I like to receive a promise from God just like Sarah and Abraham? Maybe not. As old as I am now, and I'm not even as old as Abraham was when he left Haran, I can't imagine being told that I would have a son with my wife of 47 years. What do you think was running through the minds of Abraham and Sarah? Abraham and Sarah were probably elated, yet they were incredulous that this long promise could finally happen. He, although at different times, we read in Genesis 17 and, and at Genesis 18, they both laughed at this news. However, the most important promise, the more important of this response of Abraham and Sarah was that they believed that God could and would make it happen. As Paul wrote about Abraham and his faith, he said without weakening in his faith, he faced the fact that his body was good as dead since he was about 100 years old and that Sarah's womb was also dead. Yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but was strengthened in his faith and gave God glory, being fully persuaded that God had power to do what he had promised. This is why it was credited to him as righteousness. For those interested, it's in Romans 4. Abraham exhibited faith, faith that is outlined in Hebrews 11, by his belief in God's power and promise. Now, faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we don't see. Abraham's faith is the faith that is required when a person is saved. And without faith, it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. God believed God existed as the God of all things and that God had the power to bless or reward him by following him or seeking him earnestly. The promise from God that Abraham and Sarah for a son was just a part of the larger promise made to Abraham when he was in Haran. Recall God had promised Abram in Genesis 12, I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. And I, all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. Because of Abraham's faith and trust in God, he went on to Canaan and was blessed. He became wealthy. Then God promised Abraham that he would make his descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, even though Abraham had none. Then God promised Abraham and Sarah that they would have a son to begin a line of descendants. But what was God's plan to bless all peoples on earth through Abraham? Well, Paul actually knew the answer to this question when he wrote in Galatians 3. Know then that it is those of, of faith who are the sons of Abraham and the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel beforehand to Abraham saying, and you shall all nations be blessed. So then those who are of faith are blessed along with Abraham, the man of faith. That's in Galatians 3. We as followers of God are blessed through the faith of Abraham as God had promised. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to his promise. Paul wrote that in Galatians 3.29. We, as followers of God in Christ, are part of the great nations 
and the name of Abraham that God promised him. We are part of God's promise to Abraham. Don't you think that's pretty amazing? Mm 